Okay, fruit flies have all sorts of really interesting characteristics and they're really easy to breed. You can make like little vials of fruit flies and you can buy different kinds of fruit flies and then do all sorts of genetic crosses, which is really interesting and kind of fun to do. And then you like make them drunk and count them. And um, I don't think making them drunk kills them, but it might. Okay, but anyway, fruit flies are a group of critters that have given great insight into um, genetic patterns, especially sex-linked patterns, because eye color is sex-linked. So we have um, a dominant trait, which I'm gonna call R, which is red eyes. And this is the normal state of things. The other thing I wanna show you here is that in fruit fly landia, do you see that curved abdomen, like that really round abdomen? This is a male fly. And the kind of pointed abdomen is a female fly. I believe that pointed abdomen is about um, having a egg depositor. Like it, that, it's like a tail for digging a hole and depositing an egg. So we've got um, phenotypes of flies here are um, a red-eyed male, a red-eyed female, and then we have this recessive trait um, that I'm gonna call little r, and that's, oops, not red eyes, it's white eyes. And you can see that we have a white-eyed female and a white-eyed male. Well, it just so happens that this eye-colored allele or eye-colored gene is found on the X chromosome. So our male does indeed have XY, and this guy has red eyes. So super interesting to think about this because he could have, um, he, we know he has at least one dominant allele. Oh, wait, we know he's a dude and he only has one X chromosome. So he has, um, that's it, that's his genotype, I'm done. He just has one big R to throw around. The female is the one who, look, we know she has at least one big R because she's expressing the dominant trait. However, her other X chromosome, sometimes you put it like this, where you go, I don't know what her chromosome is. I don't know if it's a big R or a little R. We know there's something there, but we don't know what it is. So you might make it a holding place. In a problem, they could say, you have a heterozygous red-eyed female, in which case you would be able to fill in the rest of this problem. Let's do the um, genotype of this white-eyed female. What do you think that, that her genotype is? Well, we know she has two X chromosomes, and in order to express the recessive trait, she has to have two copies of the recessive allele. And then our white-eyed dude, the white-eyed dude over there, he has to have one copy. His X chromosome has to have that white-eyed recessive allele. And he has, in order to have the male characters, he has to have a Y chromosome. Okay, so this is another example. We could do all sorts of fly crosses. We could... Um, cross a white-eyed female with a red-eyed male. I could cross, I could give you a white, a red-eyed female with a white-eyed male, and then you tell me whether or not she is heterozygous or homozygous based on the offspring that we produce. That's almost a test cross, isn't it? Like if you did that, if you did... If you cross any female with this white-eyed male, any one of our red-eyed females with a white-eyed male, we, that could be a test cross and would help us determine the um, actual genotype of that female. 
keeping track of your X and Y chromosomes when dealing with traits that are linked to the X and Y chromosome or X or Y chromosome, it's super important to um, do. Okay. Inheritance patterns based on sex chromosomes. We also have interesting inheritance patterns based on um, chromosomes not separating properly during gamete formation and ending up with odd numbers of chromosomes. So that is called aneuploidy and let's talk about that next.